Welcome back to the channel guys. Today I'll be playing some Remnant 2. It's going to quickly go through the in-game settings. So playing at a resolution of 3840 by 2160. As you can see no upscaling is being used so this is native. And all settings are set to Ultra. I've set the FOV to 1.2. And of course I'm not using any um, reflex in terms of reducing input latency. As I'm not using any frame generation or upscaling anything like that. So, Remnant 2 is an Unreal Engine 5 game, and it is extremely demanding on your GPU in particular. I'm using my um, RX 7900 XTX system with the um, 7950X 3D CPU, just to see how this game performs at native 4K, because it, it has to be said, it does appear that the Radeon system... Don't suppose you've seen Clementine yet, have you? Keep trying, hey? She's gotta be out there. So it does appear that the Radeon system does have the edge in this game in terms of native performance. Which is pretty surprising because on average Stop by any time. You know where to find on average the RTX 4090 is generally the faster GPU. But um it's either equal or or better by a few frames per second. It's uh highly unusual to see that, so this could be a foreshadowing for just how well the architecture runs on the Unreal Engine 5 game. So that could bode well. Or this could just be an outlier. But either way, um, there doesn't appear to be any GPUs on the market right now that can run this game native 4K at ultra settings at a locked 60 frames per second. So if you haven't got access to the game yet it is should be now available as you would have had to have owned the ultimate edition that's how i was able to play so early and uh, my thoughts on the game so far is pretty challenging um it doesn't hold your hand you do need to pay attention if you want to uh, complete objectives let me just take these guys out I've tried a little bit of multiplayer, but um, it's it's still ridiculously hard, even with uh, a party of three or four. I've never known an engine to fluctuate so much in terms of where you are in the game, the performance just really changes. So just for moving forward a few feet, I went from 48 FPS all the way to 56 FPS. So it really does matter where you are and it's hard to get an average um, frames per second as you can see here just hovering in the high to mid 50s but that can change at any second you know there's a few more hostiles you really got to watch your back on this game because they do creep up on you Panic there a little bit. So that big sword on my back is not for sure. I just use it sparingly because melee is a little bit clunky. You really got to judge the distance correctly or you'll put yourself in a worse situation. As you can see, still in the mid 50s, even exceeding that now. Going over 60 FPS. So again, it really does fluctuate depending on what you're doing i'm gonna head out to the main world the wastelands just so you can see what kind of performance you get on an open map because when you're in dungeons and things like that it does appear to be a little bit less demanding graphically i, I think the game looks okay the presentation is not bad but it's not really doing anything special either so i can appreciate why people feel the game doesn't warrant the uh, PP power required to push to push it because it doesn't look um, really that special in terms of the presentation. So you're going to need something like, I would say, a 4080 and above to get a playable frame rate with, uh, 
with a 4K Ultra image at native, but the upscaling does a really good job here with the LSS at quality. Um, with the RTX 4090, you can get around 90 to 110 FPS depending on where you are. And on average, you can expect about a 30 FPS bump while using FSR as well. So um, you can get some good playable experience and uh, pretty much a lock 60 FPS experience if you're willing to use a bit of upscaling. As you can see outside into a more open world, you can see you're more into the high 40s. But the uh, RX 7900 XT-X doing a great job. 7950X 3D, not really using the Vcash cores. I would have thought it would, but it seems it prefers to use the, uh, the standard cores that boost a little bit higher, so... I just let the OS scheduler deal with that. It kind of picks and chooses what works best for it. I'm not too sure how it works it out, but it always seems to make the right choice. Shit. You really got to be careful out here. You feel safe because the enemies are relatively weak, but they can really gang up and that's what their strength is. They will outnumber you back you into a corner and uh, take you out. So you really got to be careful. It's easy to die on this game. Okay. I'm outnumbered quite heavily here. I thought I'd note as well, the first patch for this game has just came out as well. So what they did was uh, fix a few issues with progression. There was a few missions that you couldn't progress because of uh, a glitch or something. And there was a, there was a reduction in the voice actor, that your main character, because he makes a lot of um, comments that he repeats way too much. So they've reduced the frequency of that as well, which is nice to see. That was one of my main criticisms about the game. The, vo uh, the main character just talked a little bit too much and said the same thing over and over again. It can get quite tedious. So this is obviously not the recommended way to play the game. I'm just trying to prove a point to how heavy this game is. And also just to kind of show you guys some performance compared to my RTX 4090 system. I may even do a side-by-side -side comparison running around uh, the main camp, just so you guys can have a better look. Um, because they're so similar in performance, it's it's very unusual to see that, because the 4090 at 4K generally always has the upper hand. So it might just be something about Unreal Engine 5 that the RDNA architecture and the chiplet design of these cards really like. Another one of these spirit ones. These are the only kind of enemies you need to be careful with because these spirits, they'll basically invade any nearby machine and increase its, its power quite a lot. Anyway, I'm not going to stay out here and kill enemies all day. I'm going to actually make my way to a dungeon and try and complete a mission that I've been stuck trying to do for quite a while. It always amazes me how efficient this 7950X 3D is. Compared to my i9-3900K, you'll very often see the 3900K using almost double the power and um, and generally produces similar results as well so it's it's not ideal hopefully in the future intel will get a get a hold of that but i don't expect to see any improvements to at least arrow lake maybe i've got plans on getting the uh 14th gen raptor lake refresh i may as well because i don't really want to change off the socket 17 motherboard just yet i tend to try and keep tpus for around two to three years 
and uh, GPUs I don't mind changing every 12 to 18 months, but um, CPUs is a little bit more expensive just to keep swapping out. So I don't mind swapping out a CPU, but the motherboard and the memory is a little bit too costly. So speaking of updates as well, there has obviously been some BIOS and Nagisa updates for the Zen AM5 platform. Some of you may have seen that you can even achieve speeds of 8,000 megahertz in terms of RAM speed. Um, but it's not all black and white. You do need to kind of drop down on the F-clock. So there isn't anyone doing any one-to-one -one at 8,000. And uh, the F-clock seems to be a bit of a bottleneck. So you don't really gain a, a terrible lot of performance by running high-speed RAM in games, it seems. But, um, you know, I'll wait for official versions to come out and see people doing some real benchmarks before I make any judgment. So I won't be installing any beta BIOSes. But I'm definitely keeping an eye on things. AMD may have just gone from having kind of mid memory support to having the best DDR5 memory support. Which will be pretty incredible overnight. Okay, so it's a, it's a little bit easy to get lost in this game. They don't really give you a waypoint, so you really got to pay attention to where you're going. But um, I'm heading the right way. I'm going to take this elevator up and then I can kind of start this dungeon. Too sure what to make of the soundtrack on this game. It's um, it's almost pretty much all synth, so it almost gives you like a uh, a Blade Runner kind of feel to it. It's an interesting soundtrack choice, yeah. but it works, I guess. So these checkpoints allow you to fast travel. They also allow you to replenish your ammo and your. Uh, your health so it's always good to touch them even if you don't plan on using the fast travel feature when you die you'll always respawn back to the last checkpoint you you activated but the good points of the game is it generally does play smooth works well with um upscalers has great upscaling support, XESS, FSR2, and of course DLSS, and of course frame generation if you have a 40 series card as well. And uh, it's interesting that um, people still are not completely sold on frame generation, but I will say with the 4090, it works very, very well on this game. Feels very, very responsive. So AMD need to kind of get in gear and Give us a taste of FSR 3. They're definitely keeping very, very tight-lipped about it. I'm not too sure when we can expect it, but, you know, we're, uh, we're seven months in to, to the year and we still haven't got it yet. So it's not exactly great form by AMD, but hopefully they'll get it out by the end of the year. And because um, they have been boasting things like 3X performance, which is... Pretty insane. It's something I will need to see before I believe it. So let's see just how much it gets supported as well. Because even though FSR is open, it's not widely supported as AM as NVIDIA's DLSS. So, you know, let's hope it actually gets adopted as well, not just a feature that kind of larger gets forgotten about. I 
I do think some of the finer details on the game is pretty good, like the greatsword. It's like a junkyard greatsword that I've got, and it actually the design of it's really, really good. It's got a lot of detail in that in that sword, so the artwork is good. But overall, I would say that you know the presentation of the game isn't anything that anyone's gonna say wow to, but it's possible. I don't know why I get Blade Runner vibes when I hear the soundtrack to this. I guess it's just all the kind of synth music. Making a steady progress though. Should be approaching a dungeon fairly soon. I'm still very early in the game as well, so if you're, you know, hoping to avoid spoilers, you don't have anything to worry about in this gameplay. Um, I won't be really revealing anything. That's what I mean about this game. It will try to gang up on you with um, a load of enemies out of nowhere. And um, if you're not careful, get taken out and every now and then they'll just put a stronger one in your way like this one i have to be careful because it's got really strong attacks i'm gonna try and take it out as quickly as i can and these ones always drop something special in terms of loot that luminite crystal is very very useful and you only get those from the harder enemies You can't say the levels aren't are, are small because they're pretty big. So that's a plus on this game as well. There's a lot to explore. Just using on the 10 gigabytes of VRAM. So you don't need a massive amount of a VRAM buffer to play this at 4K native. And of course, if you use an upscaling, it should reduce the VRAM demands a little bit as well. I would say that the RX 7900 XTX definitely achieves higher ma uh, maximum frames per second than the RTX 4090 at native 4K. So yeah, I may I may do a little bit of a side by side comparison. Nothing special, but just to show you guys the difference in performance, because this is a rare win at 4K native for the RX 7900 XTX. So I want to kind of put that out there so people can uh, can let me know what they're getting as well, because it's definitely something that more people are reporting on. This isn't like a one off on my system. Um, it's generally been benchmarked. And it does appear that the 7900 XTX is definitely the fastest GPU when it comes to Remnant 2, at native 4K at least. Okay, so I finally got to the dungeon now. And um, I basically get tested by this AI quite um quite a tough challenge it sets me but i'm gonna give it my best been stuck on this mission for a while
are simple. Kill everything on this train before it crashes and you die. Okay, so you got seven minutes to kill everything. But I've never done it. I've been stuck on this mission for so long, so maybe my best shot. I've leveled up a little bit, so I'm a little bit more confident than before. Okay, so far so good. These spirit things are so annoying, you've got to take them out real quick because they possess other machines and just make your life all round difficult. I finally took that thing down, didn't go the way I wanted but could have done regardless. Barely made it out of that one. Okay, just over five minutes to go. guys ain't really too much of a challenge but the AI is incredibly accurate though very much use ambush tactics that's the best that's pretty much all they've got to them they ambush you and uh, slowly grind you down and back into a corner This is the stage before last, so I'm nearly there now. I've got another spirit I need to take out. As long as I can take this out quickly, I should, I should be okay. This thing is so elusive. And it always seems to be appearing when you run out of ammo. Like it times it perfectly. Okay, I've taken it down. I don't use my sword often, but when I'm backed into a corner, that's the best time to use it. I'm gonna grab all the ammo that I can because you're gonna need it. <laughs> Three minutes. Think you make it? Not too sure, but I'll give it a try. I've never progressed further than this bit, so Let's see if I can do it this time. The trick to it is just to deal with the enemies as quickly as possible before they gang up. They start flanking you as well. So it's pretty hard to uh, keep them at a distance. out of ammo here. Sometimes it takes so long to reload. I've got to use my sword. 
Yeah, I'm not getting out of this. Well, I gave it a good try. Thanks very much for watching, guys. And I'll see you in the next video.